Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for taking the time to being here with us, with our, me and with my listeners. Um, I'm so glad to have you because you do some amazing job out there and a lot of entrepreneurs need your help, need your advice. Uh, because when we start a business, we don't know where to start and where to finish. And you have this amazing uh, strategy that uh, you teach entrepreneurs to apply in their business to get organized and create a team and how to put it all together. But um, I introduce you and uh, I wanted to ask you, Tell the listeners on your own word, like what is there that you do? Okay, so essentially I help entrepreneurs stop working so hard. And we focus on three elements of your business. Think of it like a pyramid, team, time, and toolkits. Now, what happens for most of you guys out there, if you can relate to this, is that you spend about 80, 90% of your time trapped in the web of admin, just trying to crawl out of it. And I firmly believe that, first of all, your business should support your life, not consume it. And I believe in what we call the win formula, 60-40 win formula. You should be in creation mode 60% of the time and admin mode 40% of the time. And because that creation mode is all about getting your ideas to execution. Because you didn't start a business just to run a business. That's like when you had a job, you, you, you repeated the work, you're doing admin all the time. You're here to get that next thing out. Whatever is that, that is for you, whether it's a podcast, a book, a second book, to do group coaching, whatever it is you want to do, that is the creation mode. And you can't be crawling out of the web of admin constantly late at night and then thinking when you started the work day tired that you're going to you know, get this stuff done at eight o'clock tonight. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, you're so right because a lot of us as an entrepreneur, we just like, we could quit our job becoming, we want to be entrepreneur, we're going to have, we wanted to have free timing and more, be, be more productive, but yet it gets so overwhelmed. And then it it's does. just like, and that's how the burnout happens and all the other things, which I have um, some amazing episode on that, that the listener can listen when it comes to burnout. But what makes you, what made you feel inspired to do this kind of business? Yeah. So I was like everybody else when I started my business, I worked insane hours and you know, I mean, oh my gosh, it was just horrendous. You go two years without sleep and you start to lose some of your charm. You just don't become as charming as you think you are. <laughs> so I was starting to realize that, you know, my husband was my biggest fan, cheering me on. And I was wearing this badge of honor if I'm working so hard. And he used to say, I was always stealing from sleep, get up earlier, earlier and stay up later and later. Right. And I just thought, well, you know, you start to get impatient because you're like somebody, you, you know, you're waiting to go somewhere. I'm like, I'm ready. And you're like, okay, I'll be right there. And you get there and they don't even have their shoes on. And you're like, oh my gosh, I could have answered another email, right? So you become hysterical, what I call, you know, I call myself now a recovering Russiaholic. So I realized this is not good. I can't sustain this. I'm not as warm of an individual as I used to be. So I started to feverishly examine you know, successful entrepreneurs. And by successful, we talk about this in my book, When the Hour, When the Day book. It's really about, do you, know, do you have a life? Do you have a business that can take care of itself? Are you all consumed by that business? So there are many people that bring in revenue, but they're not what I would deem to be successful. So I started looking at these entrepreneurs that are successful and, and have a life because that was the whole freedom promise, you know, come to the mothership, be an entrepreneur, get freedom. And so I started to make some really significant changes and I'll move the story forward really quickly and tell you that I went from 16 hours a day down to six and we'll unpack that in a minute. Wow. And you know what? Luckily I did because it was a couple of years after that, that my husband had been diagnosed with colon cancer. I had been pulled away from the business for about two years. Oh, and so when sorry. I returned my existing marketing clients, cause I'm a marketing strategist, they were not aware of my absence. They had no idea that I had been away. They didn't know how I did it. And the local business community didn't know how I did it. I mean, I just felt it wasn't good for business. Also, we were very positive in nature. We felt that if the doctors were wrong, we sat around crying, holding hands for two years. If the doctors were right, we sat around the last two years crying, holding hands. So it wasn't our approach to make it public because it wasn't how we navigated it. Right. And so when I returned, people started to say, look, how did you how did you do that? I also planned surprise trips for my husband and made memorable moments. I took some strategy, you know, and I lost the guy at home that frankly did all the housework and everything. Right. So I started working with entrepreneurs 
and getting them so that they had evenings and weekends off and not missing soccer games and being present for their family. And, and so then I thought, wow, how can I help more? So I wrote my book and, and then it just sort of mushroomed from there. And now I'm on a, a real passion to create a movement where your business truly supports your life instead of consuming it. Cause so many entrepreneurs that I work with, they look good on paper. You know, they've got a podcast, they have a business, they're making money, but they know they're working too many hours. They know they're, they shouldn't be working this, this, this hard five, six, seven years in. So I just thought they're kind of like the invisible and sort of like a silent killer of wearing themselves down to a nub and burnout. So I just thought, how can I reach those people? How can I make a difference? And that's how, where it all started. Wow. I love the part that you said that uh, success, a lot of entrepreneurs, they're like making money, mm -hmm. but they don't have time. And right. that seems to be a huge problem lately for a lot of entrepreneurs, especially like you said, the, the, the uh, women that are like mothers and they're missing their kids' events and uh, working on the weekend. So this, I love what you said. This, we want it to be successful, but now we're adding so much more hours and you're like, well, I didn't see success this way. You know, yeah. I am yeah, making the money. My kids are having nice stuff. I'm having a nice home, everything, but I'm not happy within yeah. myself because again, I'm so burned out. I'm keep working. I'm keep working. And that's what I love about your program. So the one thing that you are really focused on is the team building and, and mm -hmm. how that can help you. So my question to you is, when should an entrepreneur start building a team? And the reason I'm asking you this, because uh, a lot of time entrepreneurs say that, well, I can afford, I just start oh. my business and all that. So what would you say to those entrepreneurs? Yeah, that's a great question. I hear that a lot. I totally believe that too. So we do talk very much about building your win team, your what is next team, so you can get to what is next. And, and there's a strategy to that and it's very powerful. And then we lean into, we'll talk a little bit more about your super toolkit. So those are the backbone to everything in your business. But I know for me when in the beginning, listen, but you know, I went virtual a long before everybody else, even the local businesses, five minutes away, I just realized I can end a call and hit a button and we'd be fine and take another call. Because what I was doing though, way back in the beginning is, you know, even I would drive to an appointment as a marketing strategist and I would sit in their office and I would take these notes because each, you know, marketing package is very unique and custom and all this other stuff. And so I would make these notes. Now I would promise hand to God that when I got back to the office, I would put them right in the computer. Now that never happened. If I was lucky, I got those notes in Friday afternoon. More often than not, it was the next Friday. And what would happen is sometimes they would call to clarify or ask a question, these potential clients. And I would be scrambling because my notes were meant for 20 minutes, not for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And heaven help me, if I gave them misinformation or the wrong quote, it would look like I'm trying to swindle them when in fact I was just ill-prepared, which is not somebody you want to come across. Those are my two options, ill-prepared or somebody trying to swindle you. Not two great options, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought enough with that after suffering and this, the burden of, oh, I have to get to those and uh, whatever, all that stuff. So then I found, you know, one of my first outsourcers and this was like 10 plus years ago. So it was very cutting edge at the time. Um, and I found an outsourcer that did transcriptions and heaven help me. This was her jam. This is what she liked to do. I don't get it. Sound very boring to me, but she had like 10 <laughs> clients. This is all she did. And she was really fast. So sometimes I needed her for three, four hours worth of appointments. And what I would do is I would leave uh, the appointment, I would sit in the driveway, I would talk into my phone, go over my little hand, very short notes, give her all the details that I remembered fresh in my mind, boom, boom, boom. And they would be within, you know, within 24 hours in the computer. Now the weeks that I needed her for three, four hours, it cost me 12 bucks. The weeks I didn't need her, I didn't call her. And that to me is when I heard angels, I was like, Oh, oh mm -hmm. my gosh, this is nuts. And so that's when I started looking at everything differently. Of course I could afford 12 bucks. I certainly could afford 12 bucks if it meant losing a client and all Friday afternoon. I got all Friday afternoon back for 12 bucks. So yeah. now you have even cheaper platforms because now yeah. you've got transcriptions for like 10 cents a minute or whatever, right? So what I want you guys to understand is I assure you, I promise you, you can afford this and I promise you, you can't afford not to because this leans us into Valerie, what I call the three D's. This is damaging overhead, delayed income, and diminished opportunity. 
Mm. And so often you think as an entrepreneur that you're saving money, do it yourself. But mm. I would say to you, let's imagine to keep the math simple. Let's say that you could sell a package for a hundred bucks. Right. Now, when you're doing the work late at night, five, six, seven, eight o'clock at night, you're billing your company a hundred bucks an hour because you could have brought in that revenue. Mm. You think you're saving money? You are damaging overhead to the company, mm. right? And then go to delayed income. What does it cost you when you could have had a client in February that you didn't get to June because you were so trapped in the web of admin? Plus, what if they had referred you to one person? Then we go to diminished you know, opportunity. We've all had that painful journey where somebody said, oh, I wish I'd known. I just hired somebody to do that. And now there's a lifetime value of that client. How much did that cost you? So you can't afford not to have what I call a win team, a what is next team. Mm, love it, love it. I remember when I started uh, my business and it's just like we're putting all these hats in our head and I, I wanted to do it myself, do it myself, do it myself. And, I, and like you said, for even for a couple of years, it was just like, I got to the point that I was like looking at myself and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so tired and you don't really perform. So I had these clients, right? So I'm going to, between doing my work, between like, uh, you know, brainstorming, between like going through the client's file to see what they want and what are we going to talk about next week. It just was too much until I, like yourself, said to myself, I can do all of this myself. So I, I personally hire assistant. I hired yeah. assistant. That, that was my first step, which helped me a lot. And then after that, obviously, we, I add on more people. And the beauty of this, like you said, the platforms are so easy. And there's so much resource out there that people can Google and people can find that. And you can even out-resource your work to other places that are very, very cheap that we're going to talk about. But somebody's, some entrepreneur might going to listen right now and say, well, Chris, like... Uh, how much is going to cost me to hire somebody? I know you said that you for 12 bucks now is a little bit different, but I have a um, multiple stuff like, you know, I, I need somebody to edit my video. I need somebody to write a transcript. I need somebody to publish my thing and all of these stuff, how much an entrepreneur should have or, or put it together in their mind that this is how much is going to cost me if I hire a certain amount of people to do this job for me so I can free myself. Well, it's a little bit like saying, Valerie, how much do groceries cost, right? So it depends what you have and how much you're going to eat. And is this for lunch? Is this, you know, fancy? Is this basic? Whatever. But I assure you, you know, I have a podcast as well, When the Hour, When the Day podcast. And, and it's just general business. It's not focused on this. It's to get to your next win now. It could be anything from social media to sales. And I know we help a lot of our clients and people are, are known for, you know, our, when I process my podcast, it takes me outside of the interview, it takes me about 12 minutes because my team has everything in play mm. and my part of it is 12 minutes. And most of my clients, when they come to me, you know, they've maybe taken a year and a half to write a book and we can get them out in like, you know, six weeks. Their podcast, a lot of them cost them like six, seven hours a week and hundreds of dollars. And we had it down to, again, 15 minutes and like something like 60 bucks. It depends on what you're doing with the podcast post-production. So it's unbelievably, shockingly, surprisingly affordable and manageable. And know that when I talk about a team, a team is a win team. What is next team? It, we're very lean. Like I'm all about a lean team right? Mm -hmm. Like I get a lot done. I've got group coaching, individual co coaching. We've got this winner circle. I have a book, I have a podcast. I'm working on a second book. We all do all that. And I have a team of three. So we're not talking about a big thing. One of the things I would tell you as well is we haven't addressed this yet is we really talk a lot about our super toolkits. So what happens, the backbone to any business really is their ability to take something and say, oh, can I do this more and more efficiently? If it takes 12 steps, can you get it down to eight, right? So it's really about the super toolkits that make our team so for ourselves and our coaching clients and our group coaching clients and our winner's circle. It's really that that also sort of like the difference between being in a rowboat mm. or a motorboat. Oh, wow. That's so true. That's so true. And it's, it's very helpful. So um, what is the biggest mistake uh, that most entrepreneur makes when they're trying to build a team? That's a great question. It's one of the ones I get the most common on my website, www.winthehourwintheday.com. And mm -hmm. what it is, 
is that too often people, they do two things. One, they hire somebody that they think, oh, great, everything's a mess. I'll hire her and she'll like take care of this. And it's like, you can't parent up. You can't hire someone that's then going to manage you, right? And that's a mistake a lot of people make. It's like, okay, everything's, she'll come in and organize me. And it's like adding more people to chaos is, is not a plan. And they don't have the power to do that. Now, the other thing is having it when, you know, you're not set up, you don't have any super toolkits in play and where too often people hire an outsourcer, which is very different than a win team or what is next team you hire someone. And if you think about it, our whole hiring process in North America, in the world, Europe is upside down, you know? So what happens is you hire someone, you start training them, you give them work, then you check on the work. And now you're leaning over checking on their work all the time. It's a very parentified system. It's like parent child, it's like teacher mm. student, right? right? And that takes up more time. And Chris, I don't have time for that. Right. Come on, I'm busy already. I can't keep up. Now you want to give me another job, which is managing them. So that's when you start hiring outsourcers and admin people versus a win team or what is next team that builds around the super toolkit. They manage me. They move me forward, right? So that is a huge, big difference. And that, you know, is where people go wrong. It's like, hey, they're, they're not ready. They have no infrastructure in play. Now, we're not talking, we're not talking boring and all this, you know, SOP, standard operating systems. I, I, I would like you to sort of picture, let's pretend for a moment in your left hand that you have a house plant. Okay. And you say, oh, my heavens. You know what? This is really exciting. My house plant is, you know, it, it's just looking so healthy and I feel so good about it. And you think, oh, this is going really well. I'm feeling good about it. Let me get a second house plant. So then you get a second house plant. You're mm. like, now I have two, right. you know, and you're like, this is great. So then you start thinking, hmm, you know what? Maybe I'll make some money and I'll sell these house plants, right? right. So now you're like, okay, all right, this is awesome. But you start to feel really good because they look good and they're healthy and you're like, I'm good at this. And then you think, hmm, you know what'd be interesting if I had a farm, you know, let's do a farm. And so if you think about that in the left-hand side, you've got plants and the right-hand side, you've got this farm. The only difference between those two is output, uh -huh. right? So isn't that interesting? It's the output, but it's the infrastructure in the middle that allows you to go from three house plants to the output, the yielding of a farm, right? right? And so many businesses don't have that infrastructure in place. So a plant dies off, you have to go get a new one. You're trying to, oh, I have to water this one extra. You know, when a plant dies, if you think of them like clients, that's not the time when you lose a client to have to go out and find a new one. Then you're already late behind the eight ball on that. So that's what happens is so many businesses go from one client to three to five and they think like those plants, somehow it's going to organically fall into play and I'm going to have an infrastructure that could manage a farm. But that's a whole separate career. That's what I do day and night, consuming my time, reading, eating, books, taking courses, learning how to do it better and better, like you know the bionic entrepreneur. And so many people think, well, no, I'm really good at doing this service. And now I've got eight clients, but I'm snowed under. It's because you don't have that in play. You don't have the super toolkits that will support you and propel you forward. That was such an amazing envision that you gave us. <laughs> um, and yes, yes, absolutely. Like you said, it's, it's so important to know the difference especially when it comes to you, you're hiring your team. Uh, yeah. And as an entrepreneur, the last thing you want is to, like you said, lean over and, and watch your other people working yeah. and ask them like, okay, what is there that, or what's in my calendar? And instead of them coming in and telling you, Hey, this is what we have for you. This is what you need to do. So that's, I'm so on that with you. It's very, very important. I've been an entrepreneur all my life, all my life. And team building is my thing like i really really do uh the communication is important knowing yeah. that the person can do their job is important knowing that they can you can give them a project and they come in and say it's done yeah you know? they do their work they actually do their job instead of you parenting and i'm a parent too so i know exactly what you're talking about one of the things that you talk about all the time is that the 60 40 rules yeah tell us a little bit about that yeah. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, most entrepreneurs are in the web of admin 80, 90% of the time. So that win formula 60, 40 is you should be in creation mode 
60% of the time and admin mode 40% of the time. Because the only thing an entrepreneur is meant to do is get ideas to execution, ideas to execution. So if you look at somebody online that you've got a little professional jealousy, you're like, oh, how are they getting stuff done or whatever? I want to be doing that. They're just getting ideas to execution quicker than you. And that's what being an entrepreneur is about. It's, you know, it's, it's not, you did not start a business to run a business. Mm, that is so profound. That is so profound because, um, now a lot of people would do the opposite, the 60 and 40. We spend yeah. so much time working, working, working. The result is very little. Yeah. And we don't get the result we're looking for. So that's why it's important to be organized and um, work with the team. And you're, I couldn't find anybody better than you to talk about the team because a lot of entrepreneurs send me so much question talking about like, you know, when can we start? How can we start? How much is going to cost? And all of that. Stuff. But the, the, the things that you taught us and, and talked about is so important is that you're, you're saving time. And when you save time, you're making money. And I love that you said that. Yeah. And so one of the words you just used, and I think it's important to tap into it is organized. You know, I'm an organized person. A lot of my clients are organized people, but that can work against you guys because what happens is you just keep reorganizing. So it's like tightening a screw, you just tighten, tight, and then you just strip the screw and you can't do it anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. So being organized isn't something that actually sometimes serves you because it gives you a false sense of security. And so I want you guys to hear this, that if you think, oh, I'm not organized, don't then think I have to get more organized. Because first of all, I always find that insulting, like be more motivated, like whatever, you know, just giving somebody <laughs> a generic thing that they should be doing, which by the way, that was probably a bad example because nothing annoys me more than people teaching entrepreneurs how to be disciplined and motivated because I've never met an entrepreneur that didn't need to be like, who needs to be motivated? If you're having trouble getting stuff done, it's because you're not set up properly and you're exhausted. Right? right. And right. by the way, discipline erodes your brain power. It's like having a whole bunch of apps open on your phone. So it's having systems that again, allow you to go from rowboat to motorboat. Right. So being organized is not the solution to this. So it's a whole different strategy. This stuff about grinding it out, paying your dues, it's all a lie. Um, it's just, you know, somebody making a, a great story out of ill-planned journey. Wow. Wow. Yes, you're right. You're so right. Uh, because that put, itself has put a lot of pressure on the entrepreneurs. Like you said yeah. that, okay, I, you have to be organized or you have to be uh, motivated or, uh, you know, all these stuff that's lately coming up. And I found that it's like, like you said, it's like we're doing more, but we're not seeing the result we're looking for. Yeah. Most people tell you, and that's intimidating. Sometimes it's like, okay, you have to be organized. You have to hire somebody. You have to do this. You have to that. And it's just like so overwhelming. And that's when limiting belief comes in because see my job is I, I teach entrepreneurs because of my own story that how to find the courage to come out, to be seen, to be heard. And that thing that you're good at, whatever that is to make that if your business, if you want to stop doubting yourself that I can't do it, I can't do it. And the plan, it was a good example of that. You know, when you're good at something, when you realize that, oh, I'm good at this and I really want to make this my career, you don't need a motivation. You already yeah, decided yeah. you wanted to be entrepreneur. You already know that you can do this. And, and the only reason you're giving up is because, you know, your system is not put in and right the way it's supposed to be. And there's a strategy beyond that because a lot of people get like, oh, I feel stupid. Chris, I feel yeah. stupid. I don't know how, how to set up my business. I don't know if I can do this. And you, I lo I've seen a lot of your video and you're like, no, there's a system. I can yeah. teach you. Anybody can learn, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, 100%. My big thing is you should be able to teach a monkey, right? I used to say like a three-year-old, but they come out pretty tech savvy now. So I've given up on that saying. But um, most of my clients tell me that within the first month of working with us, they get 25 hours back a week. That's, you know, that 25 hours is, ex it's exhausting. You're tired, you're run down you're not taking care of yourself. You start eating poorly, you're not exercising. So it's really about treating yourself like a business athlete. Mm. Well, Chris, this was amazing. And thank you so much for taking time um, being here with us and giving us some amazing strategy when it comes to team building, when it comes to your business, when it comes to entrepreneurial mindset, how it is to um, get your time back and make more money um, on your business. But uh, you also said that you're uh, writing a book and you're on a second book. Tell us a little bit about that before we go. 
Well, it's going to be more about this. So the first book is a little bit more focused on productivity and time management. Okay. Uh, we did talk about team building in there as well, but people just really latched on to the team building, wanted to hear more and more about it. So we're just going to be expanding on what we talked about here. So for sure that will be in there. Um, but you know what you guys can also check out if you're looking to hear other things we're working on, go to free gift G I F T from Chris K R I S.com. And we've got right now, we put in the ultimate entrepreneur, uh, the secret to getting 200 free hours of admin work. We've had about 35 students, co-op students that come through high school and college there. Uh, you get them anywhere in North America or Europe. And, uh, you know, they're grade 11, 12, they're very tech savvy and they love having co-op placements because they don't have homework and they get workplace experience. So when they sign up for a co-op placement, they have to put in 200 hours. So last year alone, we got 800 hours of free co-op labor. So, you know, check that out at the free gift G I F T from Chris K R I S.com. And there's a couple other goodies in there that you guys will really like. I was going to say yes. And your book is amazing. I highly recommend listeners to get your book and read it because you've elaborate on this area very deep and, and telling us exactly what to do. It's such a pleasure to have you here, Chris. And thank you so much again for being here with us and giving us some amazing strategy to apply in our business. Thank you so much, Valerie. I appreciate you. Thank you.